Welcome to uh, third tutorial on AC circuit analysis uh, using LTSPICE. This is, this is Dr. Purav Naveed and today we are going to see how we can uh, uh, find sinusoidal response of a uh, forgiven circuit element on LTSPICE. So let's begin. So let's first click on uh, this new schematic option from file. You can also do the same using this symbol on the tools bar. So as soon as you click on this symbol, you will get this area uh, to build your circuit and all these components will come to life. You can use these components. So let's begin. So we add this capacitor, this conductor, and this resistor. So this is vertical. We need to make it horizontal. In orientation, so you, you need to go to this option. Uh, to rotate or you can just click ctrl r so i'm just clicking ctrl r and as you can see this is now flipped and oh, so rather rotated and you will just uh, left click and all these components are now pasted now let's add the voltage uh, from the components library so in this particular case i have already selected voltage but you can just type in voltage to select this particular component and you will see as soon as you just write this uh, value, you will see this component selected here. Click OK. And here it is. Uh, so just connect these. Just left click on component of the source and then right click on the left component of the resistor. And now left click to turn towards the capacitor again connect uh, these two terminals and you know that you just need to left click to take a turn and left click to connect and here we are I forgot to add the ground which I usually do um, Now we have connected all parts of this circuit. Uh, let's add the value. So let's say this is 100 ohm resistor. This is a capacitor with say 3.2 microfarad. U is micro mu. Uh, and let's say this is 0 0.55 millihenry vector. Mm -hmm. Click OK. Here we are. So you specified values to these circuit elements. Now let's specify a sinusoidal source here. Since we are specifying uh, a non DC source, so let's click on this advanced option. And here you can you see all these options. So these are the options. These these are the kind of sources you can specify. An LP spice. You can specify a pulse, a sine wave, an exponential and some other options as well right so we select this sign option and as soon as we select it we see all these options there uh, which correspond to this uh, sinusoidal source so we assume that the dc value is zero and amplitude is 10 volts and frequency is 4000 or you can write 4k uh, you just need to keep these uh, two boxes empty and specify phase here in degrees right so you just in this particular case let's say the phase is also zero so as soon as you click ok you you see this is your sinusoidal source so you can also take these base values so just by right clicking on this uh, uh, source or on these values anywhere on 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 this sign which is uh, pasted here so just as soon as you right click you will see this this window here here you can change maybe the phase and the dc value let's say the dc value is 2.5 and now once you click ok you will see all the changes you made have been uh, are ref reflected immediately right so but in this particular case we are taking zero phase since it's a basic example let's take zero phase and why not let's make it more compact by writing 4k instead of 4000 
So here we are, now we can simulate it. But before you simulate, you need to specify names to these nodes because in this particular case, we are, we are we're trying to find the voltage on this particular node. So we can use this label net option to uh, name uh, any node of the given circuit. So let's say this is B0, the node. Okay, and suppose this is this node is B0. So we you just bring this symbol to the point where you want to paste this node or the way which uh, where you want to name the node. So just left click and you will now you have now named this particular node of the circuit B0. Now again go to this label net option and now write B01. Right. So and, and now bring this symbol to this particular node and just paste and now you have named this node B01 and I have named named it B01 simply because this source is already named B1 so I cannot name it B1. So I have said named it B0. Now let's simulate it. So before you simulate it, always type, always uh, go to view and see available traces. Uh, do I see available traces here? I think I don't. Uh, in fact, let's just check the spice uh, netlist. So this spice netlist uh, tells you whether you have connected your component correctly. So resistor is connected between the, uh, the nodes V0 and V01. Right. So resistor R1 is connected between V01 and V0. Right. So in fact, we have connected this resistor uh, between V0 and V01. But here, as you can see, it, it stays, it is connected between V01 and V0. So this polarity is uh, reversed. Uh, for this resistor, and that may that, that may be because of the the rotate uh, uh, option that we uh, did with this resistor. So always uh, try to uh, see this, this these connections whether they are rightly placed or not. So we uh, this this capacitor is connected between V zero one and zero, right? So capacitor C one is connected between V zero one and zero, right? Correct. This inductor is connected between uh, V01 and 0. So inductor C1, uh, L1 is connected between V01, right? And uh, this voltage source is connected between V0 and 0. And correctly so, V0 and 0, right? Uh, so this is the name of the component. This is the first, uh, where the first terminal is connected. Uh, positive polarity and this is the negative polarity right so, and these are the values right but uh, here in this particular case you see the neg positive polarity or uh, is going to be on v0 it's going to be plus and it's going to be minus for the voltage drop on this resistor. but instead this uh, next spice uh, it tells you that the po positive polarity is on v01 which is wrong we need to fix this. You can fix this by just, uh, mirroring the given uh, component. Just select the component and go to this mirror option, and you will see this component. And now, once you mirror it, and uh, you can again go to view and spice necklace, and you see that now this is fixed. Now the positive polarity is on V0 and negative polarity of the voltage drop on R would be on V01, which is right, which is correct. That's how we want it to be. So always see this net, the spice net list before simulating because it tells you uh, whether you have connected your uh, components uh, uh, correctly or not, right? So now you go to simulate and then run and you specify a certain value, say 100 milliseconds. Uh, uh, to the for the time time you want to see the response and here we are now you just right click and see the available or visible traces so you see a trace on v0 uh, which is the voltage across v0 which is your uh, uh, input and the voltage across v01 which is the quantity we want to measure 
uh, uh, the, the voltage across the capacitor and current through capacitor which is the here uh, and the current through uh, inductor which is the current through this uh, uh, element and current through resistor and there is a trace for uh, current through voltage as well right so uh, in this particular case since we are interested in measuring or uh, uh, seeing the value of voltage on this particular node let's select v01 and click ok and you see the this is this is the response so if you just uh, zoom in to the initial part of this response uh, so you can zoom in by just selecting the area that you want to i think we need to zoom in this part only and to see some and uh, an important observation so initially you see the, the value of the voltage is small and then it gradually increases with the time so this this part is the transient response uh, and if you just uh, click on this zoom to fit option and you see the original output again you and you zoom in this region now you see this waveform has settled so this is the steady state response and after that you see the, the values will zoom in so we're generally interested in this part the, the steady state region now, uh, in order to specify a certain um, uh, sinusoidal quantity, we then we specified the, specify the amplitude and phase. So you can specify both amplitude and phase by uh, so amplitude can be specified by going to any of these peaks and going to, uh, when getting your cursor any of these peaks and seeing the the x-axis what is the value of the top of this peak it looks like it is between uh, 6 and 8 rather uh, it's towards 8 volts uh, it, it looks like something around 7.2 or 7.3 um, a more accurate value can be specified by just looking at the position of this cursor uh, so if you look at it in this corner if you look at it in this corner as soon as 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 i move this cursor these values are changing these values are basically the, the specifying the coordinates of this uh, this cursor the position of this cursor in this particular space right so this y specifies the y coordinate and x specifies the x coordinate so so we can exactly specify the value of this uh, Peak by looking at the value of y. So y is the is the is the vertical uh, distance of this peak from this zero, right? So you, once you bring your peak here, so your cursor here, which is at the top of this uh, uh, particular wave, uh, which is the, the value is seven point three seven, and that is right here, seven point two nine. Seven point two nine is the is the amplitude of this uh, particular wave uh, or this per this particular uh, output and in order in order to see the phase uh, we need to find its uh, how much this uh, phase has shifted in time with respect to uh, the input uh, which is v of 0 1 so let's add v of 0 1 here so you add v of one which is your uh, input source and as soon as add it I guess I think I okay I think I uh, source V of 0 is so let's just remove this one in order to remove this click on this uh, scissor option and then end it here be gone now just uh, again right click add trace and add the input which is v of v0 click ok now you see the input source in blue uh, and the output in green right so so now to see the shift in uh, 
the in the voltage with respect to the original uh, voltage which is in blue we need to just observe any of the adjacent peaks so this here are the two adjacent peaks so you can just zoom this area by just selecting this area and you can bring your cursor to this point which we already have seen is so this is this so you, since we are looking for shift so we are looking on x now so not looking for the y value we have already seen the peak of v of v01 is 7.30 which is the y value of this cursor location right so but since in this case we now we are looking for shift so we're looking horizontally right first we'll see where is the the input source at peak of input source is at x value is 5 point just look at the uh, bottom left of your screen and you see x is equal to x 5.81 uh something something milliseconds right uh, and now i here just this it's 5.8 right and now you go to this peak and now you see what is x value is so here you see x value is 5.81 and here you see the x value is 5.84 right so the difference between these two is 0.03 so the phase is basically 2 pi f and uh, into the time difference between these two uh, between the consecutive peaks of these two uh, these two waves right so the, these two are consecutive peaks and the time difference is 0 0.03 so you multiply your uh, this time difference delta t uh, with 2 pi f right so 2 pi f so f is 4k here as we can we, we which we specified so the phase would be 2 pi into 4000 into 0 0.03 and this would be some value and this is how you measure phase right and you can again zoom fit you can do the same just select a particular region and you will see the pulse right and you can again uh, see these two pulses these two uh, uh, are the consecutive peaks and also these two are the consecutive peaks again so you just need to look at the time difference between the consecutive peaks right so uh, and and you can just multiply it with 2 pi f right so this is it for this tutorial